Hello everyone, it is I, the Conspicuous Moo, and uh, well, we had a 9.2 trailer release, uh, well kind of, it was like a developer's preview video, it was about 11 minutes, um, and of course, you know, it being a, a World of Warcraft patch, and there has been an awful lot of interest in it, it's number 44 on trending, as it says. Unfortunately, you know, it is still being a little overranked and disliked, rather than liked, and that's actually quite a good reflection of how I feel about the actual reveal as well. Um, it's like, there is some good stuff in here, but there's an awful lot of... Uh, will you ever learn? So, um, we'll go through it. Um, I think one of the first problems with this preview video is that, you know, you've got this, this nice guy, nothing against the dude at all, um, but, you know, straight off the bat, they just come out with a bare-faced lie. And it's such an obvious one too, and it's like everyone's going to call you out on this. I don't know why you even bothered. But anyway, you know, they're sort of saying, well, you know, the Pact 9.2 is, is basically closing a chapter in the World of Warcraft saga. We're going to pull up together and, and, you know, resolve all of these different story threads that we've had since Warcraft 3. As if, you know, there's been some sort of grand story plan and overarching narrative that has been going on since 2002. Now, this is, of course, complete nonsense. Um, they have quite clearly been making stuff up as they've been going along and there is no way in the merriest of hells that anyone at Blizzard or anyone responsible for the storytelling of Blizzard um, has been planning this. Um, so, you know, it has been, you know, well established for some time um, that uh, it's it's kind of just fly by the seat of your pants kind of storytelling and that, that is reflected in the way that people are reacting to it. Um, you, you frankly do not have the staff on board at the moment to, to tell a coherent story with interesting characters. Um, and you can't manage it within Shadowlands, let alone, you know, a, like an epic thing that goes all the way back from 2002 to now. So, you know, it is it is a very, very see-through and basically obvious attempt um, to say, hey guys, this is just like Final Fantasy and Endwalker, you know, the way that they're closing the chapter in this saga um, that they've had going since 2014. No, this one is it's even bigger, it's even longer, it's been planned for much longer, it's all quite brilliant really, isn't it? And everyone's just sort of going... It's utterly, utterly unconvincing. Nobody's going to believe you on that one. Um, so, you know, do you just think we're all stupid enough that we're not going to see straight through that? Or do you just not care and just have utter contempt for your player base? Either way, not a good look. Then we go on to Sylvanas, and so Sylvanas has worked out that, you know, maybe she was being used by the Jailer. Really? Really? It took you all this time? Um, you know, she might well be the thickest character in World of Warcraft history if she's just figured that out. I mean, you know, I will never serve and all that bollocks. You know, we all know how well that went down when it was revealed. Um, so, you know, it is... It is continually tragic to me that they have taken such an interesting character from, you know, way back when, who, you know, she she was an interesting individual with a tragic backstory um, that has her own agenda inside the Horde and she's trying to preserve the Forsaken and recreate them as well. She's got a great instinct for preserving her people and you just turned her into this mush. It's utterly, utterly despicable storytelling and characterization. Then we get introduced to Xerath Mortis. Now, you know, this looks like a lovely area and it sounds like a lovely area and it's course it's going to be both of those things because those are still the strengths of World of Warcraft. It's incredible what they can get out of an engine that is that old, even though it is updated over the years. Um, all I'm going to say is that I hope it's on a grander scale than Corthia was, um, because you know, you could pretty much trip over a pebble at one end of it and then fall face first on the other end of it. So um, I hope they're going to go larger scale with Xerath Mortis. You know, we're going to need something at least Argus sized, just not like Argus, please God no. They then said that they want to go out of their way and make us look like it's an alien landscape and very unfamiliar. So we're going to put floating trees and stones in. And nope, that's never been done in Warcraft before. Very good. Fantastic imagination. It's got a bit of a touch of Jade Forest about it as well, I thought. Um, does that mean the Jade Forest is the center of all creation? No. Anyway, moving on to that, um, <laughs> this is the place where everything is made. There's no mystery anymore. We've decided we're going to remove all of the mystique out of World of Warcraft, and we're just going to have these guys who make it in like a workshop. They've got a, you know, a forge over here that, that creates alternate realities and, you know, other worlds, including Azeroth, everything we've ever experienced, it's all made here. You know, there's nothing wrong with sort of having a wondering why and, you know, how is the universe made? We don't really know, but I don't know. Blizzard seemed to go out of the way to just want to explain everything to us. There's no mystique at all. Um, they were disproportionately excited about their super water that you can walk on. Um, 
you know, was aware that there were a couple of WoW classes you can do that already. Um, I have been trolled many, many times by those individuals as well. Um, so, sort of, they were kind of hinting at it sort of being a, a barrier of sorts between um, Xerath Mortis and something deep down below. So, you know, that's possibly interesting. Let's see if they explore that properly. Will they? Regarding the model designs, I don't want to be too mean, but some of them do look... I'm getting a few Sin Eater vibes from some of them. There's a, there's a certain element of Shadowbringers there. There's that pure white look. Um, but, you know, they're supposed to be prototypes, etc. So that that's the aesthetic they're going for. Um, and, you know, some of the model designs... It's, it's a difficult thing because, you you know, you're creating models that are supposed to be, you know, like prototypes in the very beginning and, you know, we're not really sure what we're doing with this yet. But then that does make the models look like they were made in play school as well. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I was pretty underwhelmed by most of them, but, um, you know, I, I think there's quite a bit of excitement about the snail anyway. I do like the runic idea, though, you know, that sort of vibe of mystery about it. We don't know how to decipher these things yet, you know, there's real Zodiac killer vibes coming out of it. Um, but it does also look a little system-y. By the way that they were describing it, it was like, you cannot progress here because you have not deciphered these shapes, you don't know what these mean, so you cannot progress. Please return next week. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll introduce you to a new word, or the letter I, or whatever. And uh, I was kind of, I was sitting there thinking, you know, is this Warcraft or Sesame Street? Could somebody let me know? But, you know, the whole runic concept and the runic design I thought was very, very interesting. And uh, it sort of pulled me back to Wrath of the Lich King. You know, you had all of those different different areas, um, the Dwarven Zones, where they had all the different runes on top of them. And they, they always looked fabulous. So I'm into my runes. I like that kind of stuff. The raid, Sepulchre of the first ones, looks amazing. Um, you know, it's very much, well, on the outside at least, it's very much in keeping with the zone itself. Inside, it looks it looks pretty amazing as well. You know, they've really pulled out all the stops on this one. Which, you know, they have to. It's going to be the last raid of the expansion. They're not doing a 9.3. This is it. This is all that's going to be of Shadowlands and... So when I said Shadowbringers there, uh, <laughs> that's, and that's probably a good thing. I think we should probably cook this expansion out of its misery. And, uh, you know, they say, we know that you've been waiting a long time for tier sets. We'll say, well, yes, yes, we have. In fact, we, we a lot of players are still struggling to understand why you took them away in the first place. Um, and you never really did get into that. You just sort of gave us Azerite armor and said, this is going to be, this is like tier sets, but better. Um, and then we had Shards of Domination, all the rest. Oh, my God. Anyway, let's not get into that. Um, it's nice to have tier sets back. They do look a bit meh, though. <laughs> to say they don't look... I mean... The thing about Shadowlands is the colour palette is a bit on the dull side, you know, because it's afterlife, there's a lot of greys and greys and golds, and it's like, oh, and the, you know, they, they all, they all look a bit quest rewardy, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're going into, you know, the first one's place, you know, the progenitors of the entire Warcraft universe, you'd think that the gear that came out of it would have a little more pizzazz to it. Or do they just design incredibly boring places and we just happen to be lucky enough to, to be in Azeroth, which has, has a lot more green than grey and gold? In any case, it's a good thing that Transmog exists. <laughs> I imagine these are going to get Transmogged super quick. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, I won't be playing, but I will be very interested in seeing what the kind of tier set bonuses are going to be like again. It's nice that, you know, they've actually made the effort and they've actually listened to their players and, and you know, brought back something which was a staple from the very, very beginning of World of Warcraft. Now they finish it up by saying that, you know, they're hard at work on the stories to come. Here's a tip. You can have it for free. Reset. Okay, you don't have to do a Realm Reborn. Nobody's asking you to do WoW 2. Point, well, actually, quite a lot of people are asking you to do WoW 2.0, but you're not going to do it. So um, we'll, I won't bother asking you, but I, I would, please, I would pray with you, go to Azeroth and have an Azerothian story based in Azeroth with Azerothian characters. I don't want any more spaceships or void lords or afterlives or founts of creation. You know, we don't need to be going to these places in the first place you know surely by now you've probably worked out that the best thing you have done in the last few years is re-release the original game and it didn't have all of this existential space cadet you know founders of reality shit in it there are plenty of people in azeroth who are 
badly behaved, have poor hygiene, have some questionable moral outlooks um, that we could definitely go after. Um, it's it's like the designers of the entire storyline have just gone, well, we've conquered Azeroth, it's all under control now, that's fine. Where are we going to go next? Where do you go after you've been in a zone, which is the place where all of the universe is created? Bring it down. Bring it back down to Earth. And please, for the love of Popoto, put some effort into class design. <laughs> Don't make a few tweaks around the sides and then bolt another system on because you will just alienate so many people straight from the outset. And you, you know, you won't get past the first month without subs tanking. You know, there are so many specs in World of Warcraft that are just shit to play at their basic level. Um, and you know, they haven't seen any major changes or iterations since Legion. And uh, you know, Legion is still highly regarded. It's why you brought it back in 9.1.5, um, so you could experience content that was actually good. They haven't had that for a while. So, you know, we'll see what the PTR reveals in the coming weeks. But, um, you know, personally, am I excited about 9.2? Of course not. Um, you know, they, they seem to think that, you know, going to ever more ridiculous locations and making the story more complicated um, is, is a good idea. And personally, I would have gone the other way, you know. I would have probably taken it down to Azeroth and have the, the final battle there, but, you know, that's up to them. Um, they have got a lot of complicated things going on, a lot of different story aspects, a lot of new races and new havens, and all the rest of it. I don't have any faith that anyone in Blizzard is currently capable of telling a story that would, you know, make any sense to finish Shadowlands or interest the players in any way. Um, you know, a lot of people have unfortunately already checked out of this expansion um, and its primary characters a long, long time ago. Um, and at this point, there's just no recovering from that. At the end of the day, if they don't go back to basics, and I don't mean like create an alternate universe and, and name it Warlords of Drenor, not that kind of basics. I mean, you know, actually planting and keeping the feet on Azerothian ground for a change. Um, and, you know, telling a compelling and consistent story using Azeroth and the people in it, um, then they've learnt absolutely nothing from this entire Shadowlands debacle. Um, and uh, 10.0 will gurgle very, very quickly down the sink. But yeah, we'll see how we go. It was an interesting video to watch. Um, you know, there were some aspects that I really liked. Um, there was a lot of things I have an issue with still. Um, have they learned from any mistakes? We will see. But anyway, um, that's enough from me. I will be back relatively soon, but until then, I am the Conspicuous Moo. And a very good afternoon to you.